Duly noted, 3-8-2013. Dr. Kathy Dooley, Doctor of Chiropractic. I also have a Master of Science in Clinical Anatomy, and I'm currently working on my Master's Degree in Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine. Today I wanted to cover Part 3 of the carryover, the plank. I have never once had a patient come into the office and done this correctly the first try. But people love the plank. I think they like the plank because they can feel it in their abdominals and everyone wants to have a really nice abdominal section. I can tell you this, the best abdominals I've seen have been on cadavers that are obese because they have to carry around all that weight. So don't think that your abs are something that you can see by a lot of crunches or planks. That's going to come from more diet. That doesn't mean the plank doesn't have value. The plank has immense value. I think that it's a full body drill and most people think it's an ab drill. So this is what I see the most commonly in the practice with planks. What people will do is they will get down on the floor, I'll tell them to do a plank, and they'll usually have either their hands up here, and they'll be doing more like a push-up type of plank, or they'll be here, and they'll have their neck cranked, and they'll be riding on their abdominals, butt in the air. Sometimes their butt will be down, but really they're putting a lot of pressure on the abdomen because they want to feel that that tightness in the abdomen. Unfortunately, that's not what we want to do. The plank itself is very much like the top of a deadlift, the top of a squat, a well-executed non-kipping pull-up, and also a very well-executed push-up. So this plank does have carryover in your life. It's the way I stand on the subway as well. I make sure I'm in a plank position, a well-protected position. Also, I see a lot of breath holding during the plank. You want to avoid this. So let's just walk step by step. I won't be able to look at you during the plank because a well-executed plank would not have my head in extension. It would have it in neutral. So let's try to perfect my plank here. So let's just start in a basic position of what I usually see and walk through it from head to toe. So I want my head actually to not be cranked up, to not be looking down, but more at neutral. Okay. So I want a neutral neck. I don't want to be riding on my scapulae and just kind of tucking or have a kyphotic thoracic spine or a flexed thoracic spine. I want to be anchored in, squeezing my scapulae together, and actually just kind of shoving my weight forward on a dorsiflexed foot. Okay? The next step is to kind of squeeze the buttocks together. That's the most common mistake I see on the plank is people that have soft buttocks, but really the, the buttocks are a huge part of the core. They're the inferior aspect of your core musculature. Big protectors of the pelvic floor. So I want you to tighten that as well. Now you'll really feel your whole body really lit up. You can squeeze your knees together and squeeze your feet together to help you to anchor your plank. And then shove your weight a little forward, squeezing your scapulae together. And that's a better executed plank. That's going to carry over into a pull-up, into a dead hang, into a squat, top of the squat, the top of a deadlift, a push-up, so many drills include the plank, so it does have carryover. And when you're thinking about it, if you're standing in line for something, just sit there in a plank position and work on your breathing. Head up, chin in, shoulders down and back. Gut kind of braced, butt tight. In that extended position, you feel tall, you feel confident, you feel open to the world. So use the plank, perfect your plank. I need to work on mine, I'm still working on mine. Hopefully you'll use these tips and carry them over into your life and have fun with it. Dr. Kathy Dooley, I'll see you next time.